Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the second day of the Community Over Code conference. Uh, I see a few more faces here than were here yesterday, so that's great. So um, today I'm going to talk about uh, how you can build a community around a project and what makes a project last over time. Uh, let me get this working. No. <laughs> just while, while someone's getting that to work, um, I'll just introduce myself. Uh, my name is Justin McLean, for people who don't know me. I have been involved at the ASF for just over a decade. And um, I've performed a, a number of roles there. I am currently one of the board of directors. I'm also the VP of the Apache Incubator. Uh, and where I help out and mentor projects. Thank you. <laughs> and um, just hands up here who has actually been involved in an incubating project at the ASF. Yep, I can, I can see some hands, that's, that's good. Is there anyone here who wants to bring a project to the ASF? Yay! <laughs> I can see some hands too. Come speak to me later. <laughs> we can sort something out. So um, as part of my uh, responsibility at uh, the ASF and in the incubator is one of the things I commonly do is review releases. And so if you have been in the incubator, I may have voted minus one on your release. Um, I hope that was a good experience for you. <laughs> if not, come and talk to me about it as well. <laughs> uh, my, currently, uh, my day job is I've just joined a startup that is based in Shanghai, and I am the community manager there. Whoop, wrong way. So, um, now, I think most of you here would know you know, th what this slide is about. You know, why do you want to focus on open source community development? And so this is probably not news, but one of the reasons to, to, to develop software in this way is that you can innovate faster and that you can develop faster. It also means that companies can collaborate together. Um, and it, look, it may be that, you know, a single company cannot hire all the best people in this field it would be too expensive for them. Uh, or it may be that some people don't want to work for a certain company. So it, it, it allows access to those skills and resources that they would not ordinarily have. It also, for the, the, the community itself that are, are working on a, on a project, it means that they get to communicate with each other and they get feedback on what they do from you know, people who are really smart. Uh, you know, there's nothing better than you can do than to work with someone who's smarter than you because you will learn a lot and get a lot out of it. The other thing that can happen here is that you get um, gradual improvements over time. The way that the, the software is developed, you get small steps. Um, and that means, usually means the quality of the co code increases over time. Um, and this process is also self-sustaining in that you'll get people who are interested in the project. They will, will come along, they will join it, they will stay there for a while. They, they may leave, they may stay, but that doesn't matter because you, you keep getting this stream of people that come to the project uh, and that makes it self-sustaining. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the Apache way. Uh, and there are many different versions of the Apache way, and these are some of the core values in it. Uh, and the first one is that the, the ASF is a charity, and we make software for the public good. And, and that has some important implications. It means, for example, uh, that we're not creating software for the good of a company. It means that people are individuals when they're working on a project, not the company they work for. But, saying that, we also have a very pragmatic, business-friendly license, which means a company can take the software and do just about anything with it. 
So, you know, there's, there's sort of two sides to it there. We also have a community around these projects, and those, that community makes decisions by consensus. And this doesn't mean that everyone has to do, agree, but it does mean that this is the best way forward. And that also has some implications. It means it's the best way forward for the project, not for a certain person and not for a certain company. And it, it means... I've lost my train of thought. <laughs> I'll come back to that. So um, we also recognise merit. Uh, and that, the way I like to see that is the more you do on a project, the more responsibility that you are given. Um, so, and uh, you can sort of see it as, you know, someone comes along to a project uh, they might submit a first pull request where they might ask some questions on the mailing list. They get more involved in the project. Eventually, after they've been there for some time, they get made a committer on the project. And, you know, as time goes on, if they become, become more involved, they may end up even being a PMC member. So you've got this, this path that adds people to your project and gives them more responsibility and gives them the ability to be more involved with it. The other important thing is that everything is open and in the public. And this means that if someone comes along to your project a couple of years after it's been started, they can look at what has happened before and they can see what decisions have been made and why they were made. And all of this is recorded everywhere. Um, users can come along and see what questions have been asked previously? And they may be able to find their answers to their own questions in there so they don't have to ask them again. Uh, and, th and this is really, really important. So people can see how things work and that gives them trust in the project. So I think if you take all those values as a whole, there's three main things that fall out from that. Uh, and that is consensus-based decision-making. And as I said before, that's, you know, working out what is the best way forward for the project as a whole. But it's also a little more important than that. By discussing these issues and trying to work out with a solution, it builds trust among people in the community. You know, they will respect each other and they will understand each other's points of view. They may not agree with each other all of the time, uh, but they can work together in a constructive way. And it's the same with the transparent communication. This also builds trust within the community. Um, and the way that those two things work with the, 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 the decision making, it often means that the steps that are made, or the changes that are made, are small reversible steps. It means there's, there's not a big risk in making a small change because it can always be undone at some time in the future. And it's the same with the governance. Because the project itself governs the project, it, and while you know, other individuals and companies may have input to that, um, the fact that, that they do this themselves also builds trust in the community. So I think the main thing about the Apache values that all come together is that it builds a community that respects and trusts each other. The other benefits that come from the Apache way is that... Um, First off is that it, it helps create a diverse community. And by diverse there, I mean uh, diverse on, on several axes. It may be that uh, some people work full time, some people are hobbyists will just work part time. Uh, some people may have different skill levels, some people may have different education. Um, but having all those different people as a whole means they can come up with much more creative and innovative solutions. It also means less risk. It means that a project 
will be more resilient to change. If you've got, let, let's just look at one axis of diversity, like um, who you work for. So on a project, there may be many people who are working on it, and they may work for several different companies. If one of those companies decides to change direction and no, wants, no longer wants to be involved in the project, for whatever reason, um, that may hurt the project, but because there are many companies involved, the projects will still continue and last. Um, and also these values of the Apache Way work to attract new contributors. As I was explaining with, before with the, the open communication, um, people can come to the mailing list and they can see what has happened before. They can see how decisions are made. They can see what might need to be worked on. You know, they, they can work out and say, oh, like, oh, I, I have those skills, I can help out here. Um, so it's a great way to attract new people. And by attracting new people and doing this continually, you're going to make sure that the project lasts over time and sustains itself. So I'm going to talk a little bit about how to cultivate a community. Uh, and already you can see that some of the values of the Apache Way will, will help to do this, but it's not to say that you can just sit back and, and do nothing. You know, you, you, you have to do the hard work yourself as well. So the first thing is that active discussions leads to engagement. Um, and you've got to be careful, however, that you have to have these discussions that anyone can take part in. And that has to be independent of time zone, who they work for, what other commitments they have with work or family or whatever. So this means asynchronous communication is the best form of communication. It may mean that sometimes you have to slow down conversations and let other people get a chance to, to be involved. Uh, you also need a, a welcoming environment that encourages new members. I, I mean, this, this is pretty obvious, but it's, it's, sometimes we, we're not so good at this, <laughs> to be honest. You want to set up expectations about how people should behave and what the, the norms are, how, how people should, you know, what's acceptable and what's not acceptable. And, you know, you want to document, document that somewhere. You might want to even have a code of conduct or something along those lines, but even if it's just informally documented somewhere, that, that's, a, that's a great idea. You also need some way of sharing knowledge from the more experienced users to the new people who come along. Uh, and this could be in many forms, as I said, it could be the mailing list, it could be the wiki, it could be your website. But you need to think from a new user's point of view and have this documentation or this information in accessible easily, but it has to be easily found, and it has to be written in a way that makes sense to a new user. Because if it's only written in how an experienced user would understand it, then it's going to be harder to attract new people. You also want to, if you want to encourage people to be involved in your project, you want to give them a shared responsibility. Having small tasks that are easily done is a good way to get people to start contributing to your project. And it feels like they belong to the project and that they want to be involved. So giving people small, easily done tasks builds up their confidence. They are more likely to get involved and they're more likely to stay. We often have projects that have... Uh, individuals in them who are exceptional. They know the project very well, they're highly productive, and they you know, write huge amounts of code. This is a good thing, but this is also a bad thing. Because if this one person decides to leave for whatever reason, um, they may get a new job, they may decide to get married and have a family and you know, don't, don't want to be involved so much anymore, um, they might decide this is all too tough and too hard and go off and live on a farm somewhere. Who knows? <laughs> but it happens. 
So trying to reduce the dependency on a single person and what they can do uh, is also something that you're going to have to try and do to grow a community and make that resilient over time. And the, and the last thing I'll, I'll talk about on this subject is that people contribute to open source for um, a lot of different reasons. Uh, some come because it's their day job and they're paid to do it. Some do it because they like the feeling of giving back to a community. But one of the most common things is people do it because they want to learn new stuff and they want to grow in their career or uh, their personal skills or, or, or something along those lines. So providing opportunities for people to be able to do that will also help grow uh, and sustain your community. Uh, so there are some very obvious ways of, of attracting new contributions and new committers. Um, and you know, we're, we're at one of these now. Coming to a conference, meeting all these people, uh, talking to you, uh, you know, writing blog posts, having a website, social media, all those sort of things will help. So what I'm going to talk about here is some, uh, maybe not some obvious ways of attracting new con contributors. I think one of the most important ones is actually documenting your project goals. If you have your, docu your, your project having goals and it's clearly spelt out and someone can see those, they can immediately see is, is this the sort of project I want to be involved in? So you're going to attract the right sort of person. Um, you want to be welcoming from all contributors from all backgrounds. And lots of projects say they do this. But when it actually comes to actual practice, maybe not so much. You, you want to look carefully at um, what you're doing so, and, and try to remove any barriers that you have to attracting new contributors. Um, a common barrier is having a very high commit bar. Uh, that's just going to discourage people because no one wants to stay around and have to work full time on a project for a year in order to reach you know, that commit bar. Uh, another one might be um, reviewing pull requests. So if pull requests are not reviewed in, in a, you know, quickly, that's going to discourage a new user from coming along. If someone comes up, says, oh, here, I found this bug, here's, here's a PR, um, and it gets ignored, that discourages them. I've seen a worse behaviour on some projects, and that is they have a bot that auto-closes PRs. And if someone has come along, gets ignored, and then has a robot close their pull request, uh, that just tells them they're not welcome there. So, you know, there are things like this that you can, you can think about and change the behaviour of the project to make it much more welcoming to, to contributors. The other thing that, that new people want to be able to do when they come to a project is to be able to learn from the more experienced members in the project. You need to have some way of incentivising the, the experienced people in the project to give up their time to answer user questions, to create helpful content that is fairly basic, that just says this is what the project is about. Uh, and you, you, you need that material created so that beginners can learn and grow and, and become more involved in the, in the project. Also, when new people or contributors are, are acknowledged for their efforts, they're more likely to stay. If they can see how decisions are being made and if they can take part in that decision-making process, even if it's just a comment on it, um, that also gives them a sense of belonging and they are more likely to stay. And if you, if you make it so that you're, they're, they're efforts are acknowledged and they're involved in the decision-making process and that they can see that the, the, what they're working on is going to have a meaningful impact, um, that really means they're going to stay. So that's sort of the ultimate goal. If they, if they think that by working on this project that they're going to make a meaningful impact in, in whatever the project is or whatever the, their motivation is, then that is a great outcome for, for, for everyone. 
So after you've sort of built up a community and after it's there for a while, how can you make sure that that continues to happen? And one of the things is that, look, I've mentioned several times, is about transparent discussions. And the fact that these allow for ongoing contributions and improvements, one of these things is that it means that, as we all know, the IT industry changes very quickly. Uh, or, you know, six months is a long time and things can be entirely different at one point now than they were back then. If you make gradual, continual changes, that means that you can keep pace with the industry. That it means that the project will adapt and still be relevant today as it was before. So that can certainly help a project sustain over time. Um, you can also, where there is a, a, you know, a diversity of committers, uh, the combined experience can ad address challenges promptly. We, we had a good example of this mentioned yesterday with the Log4J. It took a week to get a fix for that and another week to release it. Uh, in most corporate environments, that's unheard of for, for something that scale. So, uh, so the, uh, I already mentioned that point. <laughs> so the, the, the other thing is the, the self-governance that the ASF projects have is that that guards them from external influences. So it means that you know, no single company should be able to unduly influence the project. Um, and that reduces risk. And it also makes the project more resilient over time. Uh, I, I mentioned before that you know, a, a company may change direction, may pull its committers off a project. If that's only a third of the project or a quarter of the project, the, the project is still likely to continue and can still do things. The diversity of those contributors also ensures that it's resilient to change and can adapt over time and that there is less less risk involved when a situation comes up. You're more likely to have diverse contributors come up with new, interesting, novel ideas. And look, some of them won't work, and some of them, but this is the whole purpose of the, this open and transparent discussion along with consensus decision making, is a, at some point, the best ideas that are fit for the project and make the project move forward are going to be adopted. So most projects we have are, are quite good at implementing the Apache way, um, but we con constantly have to look at that and, and there are cases where we can certainly do things better. We need to make sure that the communications are, are in open and tr transparent channels. We've got to guard against making private back channels. Uh, things like public, cha uh, public channels in Slack, pu private channels in Slack, I should say. Um, and we want to make sure that communication is actually happening in a synchronous manner. Um, it's great to have face-to-face -face meetings with people. You know, it, it, you can get a lot more done in a shorter amount of time, and it also helps build community when you have these. So, so you know, projects have uh, synchronous meetings where they might meet once a month for, for half an hour. But remember that not everyone can make those meetings and that you need to bring that information back to people who couldn't, couldn't be there in some manner. Um, you also want to lower the barriers to becoming a committer. Uh, and, and that may just be as simple as, as making sure that your committer bar is not too high, but it may also be making sure that you're actually accepting all types of contribution. That, for example, you know, people who do community uh, stuff are well recognised and also can become committers. You need people to be able to do all the stuff that I've just been talking about, which is not making code. Uh, and this is actually what makes a project last and sustain over time. We need to work harder at becoming a welcoming community. And, and I've touched on that before as well. Uh, the more welcoming you are, the more likely the people are, are going to stay and become part of your community. 
Um, and you need to make sure that the documentation is appropriate for new users and, and fits their needs, as well as more experienced people as well. And, and that's definitely going, going to help there. And finally, I, I think the way that projects can last over time comes down to three things, and that's collaborative decision making, transparent communication, and self-governance. So, thank you very much for listening to my talk. Thank you, Justin. One point. I'll be around for the next couple of days, so if you have any questions at all or want to chat about any ASF stuff, please come up and speak to me. Thank you.